and it begin. Thank you so much, Julie. That's excellent. We have four with us today, and possibly some might join us at the top of the hour. But this is our October, no, it's our September meeting for the Online Alliance. And we're really lucky to have three speeches today all about pathways. And I'm going to introduce each of those in a moment. But to keep us honest with our time today, Asil, could you explain what you'll use for timing, please? Hello, my name is Asil. I'm your timer for today's meeting. And uh, I'll be timing your speech. Um, this green um, device will be shown, signal will be shown when you reach the minimum time. This will be between minimum and maximum time. And this will be when you reach maximum time. For example, if your speech like from five to seven minutes, so green will be shown on five minutes. This cute Pokemon will be shown on mm -hmm. six minutes. And this red will be shown on seven minutes. Thank you. Thank Madam you, Asil. Postmaster. I think I'm going to aspire to reach Pokemon standard in my timing so I can see that device more frequently today. So thank you so much for stepping up and showing us those timing devices. We have other helpers here today. Michelle has just joined us and she's going to be our table topics master. And she has no video today, but a beautiful picture of Michelle is showing. And it looks like she's near the Eiffel Tower. So she will have a few questions for us after the speeches. We're here today really because Julie said she was starting a new project for her distinguished Toastmaster. And I'd like to introduce her now to let us know what is this thing called Pathway Story Swap Online? Now, as you know, Julie is a pioneer in Pathways and has completed many paths, not just in English, but in French. And she has been blogging about her experiences for some time. She's reached the stage now where she would like to do her Distinguished Toastmaster project after completing at least two paths. And today's speech from Julie will be Pathways Story Swap. And this is five to seven minutes, Cecile. So let me welcome Julie Cortez, storyteller for Pathways Story Swap Online. Welcome to the first ever Pathway Story Swap Online. My intention, of course, <laughs> is to make such events happen a lot. First of all, in October, I will organize some of the first one in a club, in different uh, open environments, and then I hope all the clubs and all the districts will organize theirs. Why? First of all, I looked for something I am really passionate about. And I really have the passion for storytelling. That is why I created a storytelling club online also. I have also had for the last 18 months, in fact, now 20, uh, a passion for pathway. Yes, user interface is not what I hoped for, but it will improve. But the program made me grow. Anyway, and I would like to convey the problems we had with it, and we had all some problems, uh, and the joys we had with it and how all of us changed through the Pathway Education Program, finally. I did. And 
it is not the five paths which I finished and the three paths I now am doing. It is mostly through the people I met. And I met so wonderful people. Let's just say about Asil, who I met not long time ago, and who is in my team also, who designed that wonderful uh, ad about Pathways Story Swap Online, and Paul, who gave the Story Swap title. It was storytelling before, but story swap speaks better. And uh, Carol, who embraced so many things I did from last year, uh, when she made me explain and show base camp to guides, when I was not yet pathway guide, and gave me courage and Zaldi, who helped so many people to begin Pathway alone. And when I was at the beginning, beginning icebreaker only, and I didn't know how to go out from the prison, I couldn't close my project from Toronto, a white knight in shining arrow armor came to my rescue and Matthew Kalinowski just went to my computer and showed me how to close and how to answer to all before and after assessments. And from then on, I met many wonderful people. And as I say, the titles like uh, proficient in visionary communication come and go. But the people I met remain. And the people I met through pathway are the one who count. The last time I finished everything I needed, I was coach and sponsor and whatever you want, but I did not know what to do with my DTM project. And then I told it, I don't know who will be in my team. I don't know how to lead in my speech as Firebirds Collective. And Fabiola came to my rescue. We Zoomed together after the meeting and like a very good mentor, she asked me questions and pushed me until finally I decided, yes. I am going now, I am doing it, I am combining my passions and I am organizing festivals. In my leadership uh, development, the second pass, which I liked very much, I organized happenings. I organized together with Paul storytelling events. And so, now I try to do it again. Because the project that I have to help an organization, I didn't like at all. Those ads which are on Toastmaster International, which seems like pushing. Everything is always wonderful, but everything is not wonderful. We still have a long way to go. But if we recognize the problems, then we can be really authentic and believable. And that is what I hope to do with Pathway Storytelling 
and story swaps to tell authentic, real stories that each of us can relate to. Thank you. Thank you so much, Julie, for starting us off today and for explaining the Pathways Story Swap project. We love hearing your stories. And there are a few others of us here today who are going to tell their stories too. And we've just been joined by our first guest, Val from Tumut. Hi, Val. Feel free to chip in for table topics later. Michelle will be doing those. But right Hello, now, everyone. Hi, <laughs> Val. But right now, I'd like to introduce our second speaker for the day, Zaldi Ko from the Philippines. Now, Zaldi is an absolute master of technology. Before the meeting today, he was showing us all the wonderful gadgets that he has for his virtual club meeting speakers, microphones, cameras, you name it, he's got it. But he's also a master of pathways and has his own story to tell. And today, Zaldi is going to speak for five to seven minutes. And the title of his speech is, Count Your Blessings and Make Your Blessings Count. Please welcome Zaldi Ko. It was back in July 2017 when I woke up in the middle of the night, crying. I was wondering what made me deserve the treatment I was getting from a fellow Toastmaster. It's bordering a, a, a long harassment already. And her last strike was uh, getting me off as a pathways guide for District 75. It happened when I applied to be a pathways guide here in the Philippines. And I sent my application to the chief pathways guide. And she told me the application is already closed. We had it a year ago. And I was wondering it was up your alley and why you did not apply. And I told her, nobody told me about the application. And she said, didn't your division director tell you? I said, no. And I also checked with the club presidents of our area and they said they never received a notice from the division director. So then came August 2017, George Marshall offered to deliver his uh, level four webinar speech project at my club, one of my clubs. And I haven't had any successful testing of uh, remote attendance in my club. And here is George wanting to deliver at my club and I had to say yes. So, so these are my equipment. This is the mic. This is my webcam. This is my other webcam, which is a cell phone. The speaker my internet connection, and the projector. So you will see why I had wanted to go with a fully online club rather than a hybrid club because of the comp complications in setting up equipment. But then George pushed through with his webinar and it went smoothly. And it gave me the confidence to uh, conduct uh, online attendance, though setting up was really a chore. Mm -hmm. the, we were among the early uh, uh, 
we are we among the early launches of pathways in the Toastmasters universe, as we had a pathways launch around July 25, 2017. And I foresee that I could get members via online attendance or by a pre-charter online club. They can sign up with my brick and mortar club and attend the fully online club. And I advertised and Julie referred I, the first member. I, I, if I remember correctly, it was Sudhamani from UK and she referred several more. Okay. And there were totally around 14 all in all. Then came Mathilde. Mathilde did not want to attend the fully online meeting on a Friday. And she wanted to attend the hybrid meeting that was on a Wednesday. So I was forced to set up the online attendance for the club. And for the first few meetings, I could not take on any role like a speaker or an evaluator because this setting up this, this equipment is, was quite a chore. Okay. So having all these uh, members, I also had to provide support. So I had my uh, virtual support sessions with several of these members and I remember some of them had to wake me up around 5 a.m., 6 a.m. just to get help and they wanted it immediately. I'll tell you who later. <laughs> and then now, that, now that, at that time I understood why the online clubs were approved a year before Pathways was launched. The online clubs were a precursor to this pathway so that support can be provided. So, and I was glad to have uh, experience doing online clubs two ways, fully online and by a hybrid means and also become part of the district U pathways, the elite team of district U pathways guides. And then, so this is what this is indeed a blessing to be to gain all this knowledge. And right now, as I said in my title, uh, make the blessings, these blessings count. And right now, uh, we often hear uh, giving back to Toastmasters. Well, I've been giving ever since. So maybe it's time for me to get back something from Toastmasters to make full, full use of these blessings. And I'll be doing, uh, I, I own the domain name communications PH and I plan to do a webinar business and uh, work on a full spectrum of communications courses. And as to my, uh, as to the, my adversary who was harassing me, well, I just thought of it. It's a badge of honor to be harassed. So I just take it as is. So, back to you, Postmaster. Thank you, Saldi. You certainly have been through the battles. You are a warrior indeed. And I'm sure that many are grateful that you took the challenge. Certainly in getting set up with all of that equipment, my hat's off to you leading the way on that. The next speaker today is myself. So I'll just introduce what I have to say and then I'll just give you this sign, Asil, when I'm actually in the speech so you know when to start the timing. 
I started with my pathways last year when I became a guide for District 73 and District 70. And for me, it has been quite a journey. And today I want to tell you a little bit about that journey in the form of a hero. Today, my speech from five to seven is called The Hero's Journey. I'm sure you know all about heroes, but did you know that not every hero comes with a cape? In the hero's journey, you know that we move from the ordinary world into a special world. And then you come back to an ordinary world that's changed forever. And as you've just heard from Zaldi, I think that's what he experienced. His ordinary world now has changed forever and he's got the badge to prove it. Along the way in any hero's journey, you'll have a call to action. You'll meet with your mentor. You'll have lots of hurdles and things to jump over and you'll face ordeals. Well, this was true for me in being a Pathways Guide. But I learned too, that at the end of that process, I grew just that little bit more. When I first became a guide, now this is going back to September last year, 2017. I wanted to do the best I could possibly do to become the best Pathways Guide. I was being a guide for two districts, one on one side of the border and one on the other. And I first looked at the tasks in the curriculum for all the Pathways Guide and I was, oh my gosh, 18 tasks to do, 18. First, I had to read the Pathways Guide Handbook. Well, that was okay. I'd expected that. That's my learner guide. Then I had to read the Navigator itself. That was all right. And then I looked again, another 16 tasks. This just did not sit right with me at all. How was I going to learn how to be a guide when I had to do all of this reading online? There wasn't anything practical here. I didn't have anyone to practice with at this stage. This is before Pathways became available to my two districts. And it was a bit of a conundrum for me because I'm used to being an online learner, but I wasn't learning. I needed more. The next step for all the guides was to introduce the concept of base camp to many others. And all the guides had to go out and visit their clubs. So I visited Val and her team in Tumut and my other clubs in the other side of the border. And I was like this because I didn't have the full facts. I really could not see behind the door. It was locked. Remember, this is September through to December. We hadn't had the great rollout, or should I say the great cop out? It was just all foreign. So I was nonplussed. What am I going to do? I'm a coach, for goodness sake. I'm supposed to know everything. I'm supposed to be able to answer all their questions. And yet the door was still locked. Goodness, that caused me such a lot of angst. But I had to ride through that. I knew that the rollout was coming in December. I had to bide my time and I had to learn as much as I possibly could in order to pass it on to all the clubs I was visiting, eight of them. Eventually, there was a breakthrough. I knew what was needed. If I couldn't see behind the base camp door, I'll find someone who can. And you've just heard from both Julie and Zaldi about how that happened. It was Julie that I called on because she had been the pioneer. So I thought, ah, revelation. 
now I've got someone I can call on who knows what's behind the secret door. So she became my knight in shining armor. I called on her to show me what did you do in your base camp? How do you move between the projects? How do you even get in through the first door? And Julie was there to guide my way. And she had learned that by investing her time in going to other clubs where Pathways was already rolled out. Now this helped me enormously. And it's what we all do. We learn from others who've been there before. That's the whole idea behind being a hero. So now I could look at my own path. As I went through from December through to June of this year, I completed a whole path. I was so pleased with myself. I had to do 14 speeches and I could fit that in because I was a member of several clubs. But I was thirsty for knowledge. Like Julie, I wanted to get in there, find out what you had to do, do it, reflect on it, and then show others. So I was pleased that I'd had those hurdles to jump over because it made me tougher. It made me think, but wait, there was another hurdle. How am I going to influence others? Is it going to be me pushing them? Well, that wasn't working too well because at the time of the rollout in my district, it was December, we were going off on summer holidays. No one else was really interested. So that became another little hurdle that we could jump through. They weren't going to be interested in any badges that I could offer them. That just wasn't going to cut the mustard for them. I had to think of other ways. So another hurdle was presented that I had to jump over. So in going through this journey, I was growing and I knew that eventually we would come out the other side of this journey and we would be A, more knowledgeable and B, more proficient in being able to show others. So I persevered and I found some friends. Those clubs that Zaldi was talking about that needed guidance in District U, they were all screaming out for online pathways guides. Here's just a few of them at the latest convention. Now I had the great pleasure of leading people like Julie, Zaldi, Michelle and others in this project where we could be the guides and the heroes for the online and other undistricted clubs. So here I am at the end of my journey and I've got my badges to prove it. Well, almost. I've finished one path, almost finished another and part way through my third. So I know that when you start on a journey that has many hurdles, ups and downs, that you need guides, you need heroes. This is my one, this is my story. Back to you, Madam Toastmaster. Madam Toastmaster, there is another speaker now who is ready to speak, Michelle. Wow, thank you so much for that. Would you like to uh, introduce Michelle if you know more than I do about this? Anyway, I do know Michelle. <laughs> and Michelle is going to be our Table Topics Master, but are you also giving a speech, Michelle? Well, I noticed that there seems to be only, there seems to be a, dirt, a one spare slot for a speaker. So there it, is, yeah. And I thought, okay. oh, it was only for Julie. So the speech title is Leading from Beyond. Ah, okay. Well, thank you so much for jumping in. So this is five to seven minutes? Yes. Okay. With great pleasure, I introduce Michelle for our third, fourth speech for today. <laughs> and take it away, Michelle. Thank you, Carol, and thank you, Julie. I first heard about Pathways, oh gosh, 2013, when I was serving, or I was 
running for LGM. For the new ones like ASIL, LGM was Lieutenant Governor Marketing, and that was the pre that was the previous title for currently what is known as Club Growth Director. Although, since you're a member of an online club, maybe both terms don't even mean anything to you. Anyway, it was a district leadership role, and we were told that there would be Actually, it wasn't Pathways. It was the Revitalized Education Program. And so, of course, I raised my hand and said, yes, you're looking for an ambassador. I would be an ambassador. And at first, I was told, well, you're also going to be Lieutenant Governor Marketing. That's going to be a very heavy role. And I was thinking, not really, because I need to know what this is about if I'm going to serve effectively as district officer. And so indeed, I was appointed ambassador, and then nothing happened. And I turned to our chief ambassador, who I expected would know a little bit more than I did. But yes, she knew just a little bit more. She knew maybe just that much more. And so from 2013, 14, 15, I was closing on my term as district director, and then, oh, we heard the revitalized education program is now Pathways. Well, that sounded exciting, but still there wasn't much information. So again, I turned to our chief ambassador, and again, she said, Michelle, really, I, you probably know maybe more than I do because you're now district director and she was past district governor. So this was not a good feeling. And with those who've already talked, Julie, Carol, Zaldi, if you're supposed to be leading, then you're supposed to know what it is you're leading about. And then I heard this too, Julie and Brian, another very active Pathways pioneer, they were talking about they were going to go over to the club in District 27. They were talking about great communicators and uh, DTM masters. And I was like, oh, what are they doing? Oh, apparently you can do that. So I started looking. First, I contacted District 57, all the clubs that had online attendance, but none of them responded. So I tried District 27, the second pilot district. And immediately I got a response from MBC, Easy Speak or Speak Easy, Making Better Consultants Speak Easy, long title, but MBC. And so I attended their meeting on Monday. This was Monday, May 1st last year. And our spring conference would be Saturday of that same week, May 6th. So I attended the meeting and then while well, I was still on the meeting, I started typing in my application form. Right after the meeting, I sent it with my credit card information and said, please sign me up. And good for him, past district governor Ralph Jones, who was the vice president of education at the time, immediately signed me up. So I got my glimpse of pathways. I got in. I spent all, all the rest of the afternoon going around base camp looking at stuff and I felt yay I know better I, I'm the only person in the district who knows and for the next five days I studied it I created some screenshots and so on the spring conference that Saturday I was the only member of district 20, district 7 who had actually been on base camp and of course I shared the secret that you can access Basecamp by joining a club that has pathways. And they were, of course, wondering, how can you do that? And I said, there's the online attendance option. And true enough, people started getting excited. Kate Arnold, John Rodke, James Wands. There were several individuals in the district who got excited. And then the funny thing that happened is I had led the pack from beyond because this was from another district not not my own district not even my other district district 75 district 27 was totally new i led from beyond but then i when i saw that people were getting excited i was thinking well now they're fine i can go back to my traditional program 
So I did uh, my icebreaker. And I know I'm, I'm probably way late, but I only just found out project. about the year. Um, but after that, I just went right back to my traditional program, completed my other projects until I woke up one morning and I realized, wait a minute, they're already ahead of me. I'm not leading from beyond. I'm leading from behind. And maybe I'm not even leading at all. I just fell behind. And again, it was Julie who was saying, well, you need to go on. You need to try. And well, to be honest, level one was kind of boring. <laughs> but anyway, I completed level one. And then I got into level two. And I realized, oh, level two is kind of fun. There are there's, you know, the, the talking about the mentorship experience. I like that. And so then I started leading forward again. I was one of the first to get the district's triple A. And I was trying to find my, my triple A badge, but I couldn't find it. Anyway, those of you who are members of the forum have probably seen it. I posted it there. And it is, a, it's a continuing experience where, because I am also working in the traditional manuals, there are times when my focus, like this past several weeks, have been on the traditional manuals because I'm, I aim to complete by October another DTM for the traditional program because my DTM in Pathways is about ready and I want to submit both at the same time. So it's a very fun experience. And I think with Pathways, the the key word is just go forward just be proactive just be positive just have fun which also shows in our pathways forum which the latest i checked is 7200 something and still growing so this is the experience that i have with pathways and it's a continuing experience the next chapter is still to come back to you madame dosmaster 